everyone and happy holidays! Woohoo! I'm Colom and this is Andrea and we are the hosts of How to Build a Country. Today is the last episode of season zero of our test season before the holidays and before we come back in January with an amazing season one with guests and so on but more at the end of the video. Hope so ready for 2023. I'll ignore that. <laughs> so keep on watching! We wanted to do this episode in a bit of a different manner. We wanted to talk about hope. Because a year ago, we were very hopeful. And our end of your newsletter was about hope. You know, we were just hopefully getting out of a global pandemic after countless attacks on democracy from Belarus to Venezuela to Hong Kong to Tibet and I can keep on going. To the United States themselves. Exactly. We're very hopeful that, you know, 2022 would be the year when we lived in a more democratic, in a more equitable world where, you know, we realized that unity was the way forward, where we realized that we needed to share our resources, share our knowledge. And then and 2022 happened. <laughs> so 2022 wasn't the easier year. There have been a lot of darkness in 2022. We obviously cannot not mention Russia invading Ukraine, the protests in, in Iran with the horrible execution that we are witnesses as of now, and many other dramatic events. But at the same time, there's been some hope. I mean, the same fact that Ukraine resisted Russia and stood up and really fought for their freedom. And actually, many countries on the planet stood by Ukraine. It's a little glimpse of, of hope in the dark. Same with the Ira Iranian protests that I mentioned before. Iranians are fighting, are fighting back. They are trying to protect their freedom. They are trying to gain back democracy. And even in China, in the place where normally really don't look for hope, it was incredibly moving and powerful to see Chinese citizens standing up against the regime and asking for more freedom and for the end of the COVID autocracy. And if we want to look for hope, we, want, we can find hope in still some places in 2022. For example, gay sex has been decriminalized in some countries. Very true. Andrea mentioned nuclear fusion. Yeah, nuclear fusion was an amazing breakthrough in terms of science and is not the only one. There are many, many advancements across human knowledge in 2022 because humans have... You know, we have very dark sides, we fight each other, we, we cannot get together on basic things, but at the same time we're industrial, we push, and we're on, this, on the right trajectory for many things. However, on planetary challenges, let's just say that we're not doing great. So we saw the floods in Nigeria and in other places ac across the world that actually flooded, you know, most of the country, left millions displaced. Many people lost their livelihoods, lives, and more. We saw wars waging, we saw crackdowns on democracy. We saw multinationals not paying taxes where they operate, and as a result, depriving all of us of much needed money for public services. We saw billionaires replicating the same mistake we make on Earth in space, with hyper-commercialization, no actually safe from the people on how to administer it, and I can keep on going. So clearly there's a problem. But this year, this episode is still about hope. And it's not just about pointing out what was wrong in 2022, but actually, we have a lot of hope for 2023, so we might be completely misplaced and complete idealist, and maybe in a year we'll be here saying the same, same thing. I hope not, but we have hope for a few reasons. The first one is in July at Atlas, we met at the General Assembly, and our members agreed that from now on we will stop tackling individual issues such as climate, fiscal justice, and so on, but try to find systemic solutions to planetary issues. And for this, we agreed that we need a people-led global democratic governance. It's a mouthful. Basically, we need to have a way to come together, unite, and deal with issues that concern us in a way that can actually work. So we need to coordinate actions, we need money, we need capacities, competencies, and so on, in order to deal with them. And to make it very concrete to you, a global democratic governance sounds, as she said, like very, very difficult to comprehend. But at the end, it can be a global parliament, a global country, or simply the United Nations where we actually have a say. Right, it's something very or concrete direct or direct democracy. It's something very concrete that each one of us should be able to participate into because it's the only way to deal with global challenges. And so we took this decision and then we said, let's act on it. And the reason for which we hope for is on January 8th, so at the very beginning of January, we are launching what we are calling consultations. So the problem with global governance is it feels very remote. It feels very far away, even though it concerns you and I directly. Again. Amazon that's paying its taxes where it operates is as a direct result of a lack of global governance. And this means that we are deprived from, for example, health services, you know, free public transport, minimum income, and lots of potential services that we could be getting. So it is very, very concrete, but it feels remote. 
And second, it's often a few intellectuals or world leaders in the room deciding how governance is going to work. And we are not consulted. But we, the people, have the ultimate power and need to be able to voice it. So the idea is for an entire year, we will run consultations. So we will run discussions, brainstormings, debates with everyone interested and you should be interested, both online and offline. So we will release a software that we've been working on and we will host a lot of local meetings to come together and understand what type of democracy do we want to live in. And it's going to be an exciting exercise. It's not going to be a cold one where we put some data online. Actually, we're going to conduct also offline, in real life events all over the planet. We're going to start from Taiwan in January. We're going to probably host two or three events in early January in Taipei and similar cities. Colombia and I will be on the ground with partner organizations to make this happen. And we chose Taiwan as a symbolic place. Taiwan is at the forefront of democracy, both in terms of innovation and obviously in terms of threat to democracy, because China is always at their, at their front door trying to rebring them into the autocracy that the China is. So it's a symbolic moment and place for us to start this consultation. And it's also a country that has been systematically kept out of any global governance structure as it exists. It's not included in UN and related organizations and so on, when it can actually, not only is it unjust, immoral and everything, but it has a lot to bring. As Andrea said, it's one of the strongest and most innovative democracies out there. So I can't wait to learn about it. I'm so excited. It's super cool. And then we're going to move on to South Korea, Japan. And I'm just mentioning the one where the two of us will be present, but many others will be run by local volunteers. We have Stockholm upcoming, Nairobi. I know many cities where people are thinking about hosting this consultation. And this is incredibly beautiful because no one is ever trying to design a system, a democratic system, without you know, consulting only academics or only political leaders. We actually want you anyone, whoever you are, whether you're an academic or political leader or a, any other profession, occupation, students, a retiree, we want your voice, we want your in. Democracy is made of us. And we know it sounds a bit daunting. So whenever people tell me, okay, but then what do you want to live in? Like, how does it, what does the world government you want to live in look like? It's super scary, but it doesn't have to be such big questions. If you think about the issues you face on a day-to-day -day basis, global governance might be an answer to some of them. So understanding how they are not currently being dealt with and trying to find solutions. And you don't need to have all of the answers. We have a debate where a phase of, so basically online, the consultations will go as follow. We start by debating and explaining our feelings towards global governance, democracy, what are the issues we face that are not dealt with. So for this, I can tell you that in general, for me, I keep on mentioning it, but the price of rent is way too high. And there's clearly an issue as well with multinationals not paying their taxes, yet me not being able to actually rent in, in the same country. It's, we lack a global economical system that actually makes sense. In addition, I think there's an issue with democracy. I don't often feel represented in local, national, or global governance, right? So it doesn't have to be very far away. I can explain this in the first stage. Then we prioritize issues together, and in the second stage, we come up with solutions. And we don't have all of the solutions, no one does. Exactly. But we try to learn from, for example, best practices. Maybe your city has a really cool mechanism that we could learn from across the world, right? Maybe they know that you, know, you need more women in power, and so they have gender balance lists. Or maybe you get to participate in a certain way. Or maybe you have caps on uh, the price of rentals, or a way to ensure that businesses are rooted in local realities and pay, pay their dues, I don't know. So we will look at what exists, what is good, and think together about solutions. And this show will be instrumental for this, because I mentioned that there will be something new. Every two weeks, we'll try to bring on a guest on some of the topics that are being mentioned on the consultations that major issues. So we don't necessarily have the solutions. So we'll bring on some experts, some people that have thought about it to provoke some reactions from everyone. Meaning in general, when you hear about a solution, you can be like, eh, that's good, that's bullshit. <laughs> but it's much harder to come up with it, right? Exactly. So we'll do this to make it easier. And then we'll vote and we'll come up with this joint vision of the world that can actually give us hope and if implemented, can actually lead to a better outcome. So 2023 is full of exciting things on our side. And again, let's make sure that we don't feel like at the end of 2022, let's make sure that we actually get closer to the vision that we want of a united and equitable society. So to end this show, Colum, what are the three commitments for 2023, the three pledges they want to yeah. share? So I'm asking you, a lot of people do resolutions, right, for the new year. So you might, for example, have become vegetarian, drink less, try to exercise, sleep more than a couple of hours a night, and been watched less Love is Blind on Netflix. 
Some of them might be some, some of mine. Of <laughs> but we are asking you to take three other pledges. The first one is think outside of the box for the good of humanity. And by this we mean participate in our consultations. Come, debate with others, try to actually imagine what a world you want to live in looks like. We mentioned it, we don't have all of the solutions. Something that is clearly missing in the world is a clear vision of the future. For sure. The second one is get out for democracy. So not, not only participate online, which is already wonderful, but as we said, we're going to run local events. So join our events if they are near you, or even better, reach out to organize one. It can be done in your living room, in a cafe nearby, with a, a few friends. It doesn't have to be a big organization. But make sure that you stand up in real life for democracy. And the last one is become part of a community of people who actually take action. Doing it alone is daunting. Being part of a community is not only fulfilling, you make new friends and new connections, but it also enables you to do better, faster. For this, we have a few options. You can volunteer with us, you can become a member, or you can donate. We just mentioned a lot of things. We mentioned participating in the consultations. We mentioned coming to an event and becoming part of a community. For all of this, check out the link in the caption and you'll have all of the guidance on how to do it. But these are just some ideas. I think the most important message overall is please don't stay idle. Um, humanity has done horrible things in the past when we did not take action. We just let things happen. We let history flow and horrible things happen. Let's not do this this year. In 2023, whoever you are, wherever you like, if you like Atlas or not, please do something. Help people in need, participate in society. Do a little step to make this world a better place. It sounds stupid, but it's actually the only thing that can change the world. And don't forget to comment and let us know what gives you hope for 2023. For us, it's democracy and coming together. I'm excited to learn about you. Have a wonderful holiday and a happy new year. Happy 2023 to everyone.